guys what's up so i hope you have watched all the polity videos till today just for a recap uh, we covered polity introduction then we covered polity preamble then the polity schedule so this was part 1.1 to part 1.4 and then we had india that is bhara that is part 1 then we had part 2 that was 2.1 to 2.2 it covered part 1 and part 2 of the constitution part 2 deals with citizenship then the four uh, videos for fundamental rights dealing with the part three then we had four vi three videos for direct principles of state policy and this is the next video that is the 14th video in the series and this is the polity series we continue it deals with the fundamental duties and this is presented by me this is the youtube channel so please watch before everything on an academy before you move forward so anyway if you have any doubt or if you have any particular request like reading comprehension or anything just comment below the video on youtube or on the facebook page and rest assured i will make the video and please help spreading the word of this education revolution and let it reach to the last person who actually needs it and who cannot afford costly coaching anyway moving forward so it has the two parts fundamental and duties so most of us till at least in the early part of our independence have heard about fundamental rights that there are some 10 rights which state should provide us which government should provide us and they are inalienable they are inseparable but none of us uh, in that particular era although it was implicit but it was never mentioned explicitly what are your duties there are certain duties towards the state you have to perform because of the early state theory which was originated in the time of Hobbes and Locke so they used to contemplate one used to say that state is a leviathan a monster a supranational entity or something like that other used to say that state uh, essentially has only few rights to take away from the individual so anyway so fundamental duties emerged and especially after world war ii so they emerged as a key aspect of a citizen which they have to obey towards the state so they are inalienable from their rights that is basically they are the two sides of the same coin that is why they are called as fundamental they are very very basic in nature and their duties duties of citizen towards the state so anyway uh, the introduction the one of the most perfect definitions which you'll ever see is the this moral obligations of all citizens it is not applicable to foreigners to help promote a spirit of patriotism so just focus on these keywords moral obligations spirit of patriotism to uphold the unity of india so these are the fundamental duties so if anyone asks you to describe them by the way in prelims from last 5 to 10 years not a single pre-paper is there which do not have a question on fundamental duties almost 100% guaranteed that one question in prelims will be there and 100% guaranteed one question in either prelims or mains will be there in mains 4 years ago they just asked directly to enumerate the fundamental duties that you just have to enlist the 11 fundamental duties so this is the most high yield topic in polity series so please focus on it it is very very critical that you do so rights and duties of the citizens are correlative to each other and they are inseparable obviously they are the two sides of the same coin and even if they are not mentioned explicitly they are absolutely presumed on the part of citizens and they are implicit in their implication that citizens have to follow them and obviously as we know this is not a part of the original constitutions but it was added by 42nd constitutional amendment act the mini constitution and it was made an indispensable part of the constitution through this 42nd constitutional amendment act now the key feature is there were 43rd and 44th amendment act by the janta party government who tried to uh, decrease the impact of 42nd amendment for example 44th amendment removed article 31 from the list of fundamental rights and added it as a 300 a as we all know it deals with right to property which was converted from a fundamental right to a legal right but this part was not removed so we can see there was an inter-party consensus which was a big thing to be achieved in that particular era further they were increased to 11 by 86th constitutional amendment act recent act about 12 years ago and it was inspired fundamental duties was inspired from ussr constitution erstwhile ussr constitution and this is a very very critical line it can be written in mains exam and you'll get a lot of marks that citizens exercise of their rights and freedoms was and is will always be inseparable 
from the performance of their duties and obligations so that is why it was lifted from that particular region so it helps in furthering our national interest so whether you live in gujarat or tamil nadu or kerala or sikkim it doesn't really matter despite the diversity entire national interest each and every person are aware about these 11 fundamental duties so it helps in the integration of our composite culture the key feature which is here is most democracies developed democracies of western world like france usa they don't mention them explicitly in their constitution however japan is one of the few exceptions which have them explicitly in their constitution fundamental duties also find their reference in udhr everyone knows what it is i'll not dwell in it universal declaration of human rights and international covenant on civil and political rights if you want to read just read this uh, using google it will help you in writing various questions in mains now this is a very very small table for making the difference between fundamental rights and fundamental duties obviously they are available to both citizens as well as foreigners that is aliens but it is available only to the citizens that is fundamental duties are expected only from the citizens and not from the foreigners most of them anyway it is justiciable in a court of law and it is directly enforceable it is non justiciable and it is the government's obligation to citizens in a democracy rather it is our obligation to the government so we are duty bound to the government or to the state and there is no need for making a law for its enforceability fundamental duties are enforceable in themselves and if it gets violated you can go to the constitution supreme court under article 32 or you can go to the high court under article 226 it's your choice but for them parliament specifically needs to make laws for their enforceability so these are the four major difference between fundamental rights and fundamental duties so obviously this is a very famous committee called swan singh committee there were various recommendations so you must remember that fundamental duties were taken from erstwhile ussr constitution by swan singh committee recommendation and it was added to our part 4a under article 51a by 42nd constitutional amendment act it is very very critical one or two questions will be coming in prelims as well as in mains not either or it will come in both so it made recommendation on fundamental duties it suggested eight fundamental duties eventually by 42nd amendment act it was made to 10 and now we have 11 after adding from 86th constitutional amendment act it the need felt because of the operation of the internal emergency so during the june 1975 till march 1997 we had the emergency period so the basic aim was citizen should be aware about fundamental duties while they are enjoying their fundamental rights so this was the basic aim of introduction of fundamental duties so these were the recommendations which were not accepted what were these so if citizens do not follow them or violate these fundamental duties so and think committee recommended that there should be penalty and punishment imposed by parliament but it was not done on a toto basis comprehensive basis but specific laws for specific duty have been made in due course of time now no judicial review of such law giving force to fundamental duty but since one is not there so two does not hold either and finally make duty to pay taxes a fundamental duty but it was also not done now there are various observations on fundamental duties see uh, they are nothing but moral and civic duties some are moral duties some are civic duties they are non enforceable and non justiciable but obviously there are various laws which i'll talk about later which makes them implementable they are integral values they are nothing alien to us they have been part of our tradition from time immemorial from millennia and millennia last 4 5000 years and finally the, it is nothing but codification of task which is integral to our way of life the last point is fundamental rights is available to citizens as well as foreigners while fundamental duties are expected from citizens only now what is the criticism they say that it is not very exhaustive like you have a right to cast vote so it should it's also your fundamental duty so that it is one of the most fundamental duties similarly paying taxes all that was recommended it was not added because otherwise it had become very very boring sorry for the swelling mistake here so limiting the population growth they are not included as fundamental duties so that means it is not exhaustive but merely indicative then the guidelines are vague ambiguous and difficult to be comprehended especially by layman so they might confuse what is striving towards excellence means what is composite culture here what is the spirit of common brotherhood they are not very very crystal objective definitions and people can interpret them in their own manner 
and like dpsp since dpsp are not enforceable they are also not enforceable so they are also superfluous they are code of moral precepts because they are non justiciable in character and some say that what is the need to add them anyway because they are performed by conscientious citizen without them adding they were performed even before they were there and if at all you wanted to include them then why as an appendage that is part 4a to dpsp rather you should have kept in them in part 3 so it would have given a good impression that they are not inferior to fundamental rights so these are the five six major criticism of fundamental duties but obviously then comes significance supreme court honorable supreme court has held that they are obligatory for all citizens even if they are not enforceable then they act as a gentle but swift reminder that we have the duties towards india society and their fellow brethren and obviously it will create strong deterrence various laws like prevention of insult to national honor act of 1971 so it acts as a strong deterrence to anti national and anti social activity so people generally they do not disrespect our the flag or they do not destroy public property because we have various laws against it then it acts as a source of inspiration people feel inspired when you read them and you remember them when you internalize them and it promote a sense of discipline honor loyalty and commitment among them and it emphasizes that we are not merely passive observers but rather we are the active participation in realization of true potential of this great nation so if you write these lines obviously you will get good marks and you will get inspired also finally like the psp whenever a validity of a law or a statute is under consideration so you can look through the lens of dpsp plus fundamental duties and it might help you ease out in balancing article 14 and 19 versus the social needs so they can help in determining the constitutional validity of various law so obviously since they are not explicitly enforceable so there has to be law for giving effect to them like right to education is there now then there is prevention of insult to national honor act then there is national security act then there are various crpc amendment for having women centric laws then we have environment protection law wildlife protection air pollution water pollution so they are all our fundamental duties which i'll tell you now so to enforce them we have these laws in place so just uh, if you have not seen i would like you to now go to the memory aid technique video where i have explained in the last part how to remember fundamental duties i will go quite fast in this video but if you really really want to know how to use it you should watch the memory aid video so one is sun two is shoe three is tree four is bore five is hive six is sticks seven is heaven eight is gate nine is line and 10 is hen so we remember this is how you remember a particular sequence and if 11 comes then you combine again here so sun shoe tree bore hive sticks heaven gate line and hen so these are the memory aid techniques of remembering now using them i'll try to remember all the fundamental duties all 11 of them so first is to abide by the constitution respect its ideals and institutional national flag and national anthem so just remember if you want to go into detail watch the memory aid techniques video otherwise i'll go very fast here so under bright sunshine imagine you are singing national anthem you have book of constitution in one hand try to imagine as vivid as bizarre images as you can then it is burning a hole and you are covering it by your hand so one is sun sun means this you are singing national anthem so i'll constantly reminded of this then noble ideals and national struggle for freedom so try to remember our great leader someone is hurling shoe at them so you catch of the shoe and you beat the person who is hurling it so two is shoe shoe reminds you of noble ideals and national struggle for freedom similarly three is sovereignty unity and integrity of india so just try to remember s u i sui sui is needle in english so you are punching it three is tree so you are punching it just try to imagine tree as a balloon which is filled with air and you punch it and it just collapses so sui tree three tree so try to remember sui with it upholding and protecting sui of india then defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so this is the fourth one under article 51a part 4a of the constitution so just remember you are sitting on a bore you are kicking it on the side and you are rushing towards the border and it becoming larger and larger and faster and faster try to imagine as bizarre as vivid as it can 
which you will never encounter in real life then your probability of remembering will become much much higher so this is the four is bore so this is how you remember that you are defending the nation then five is hive so harmony spirit of common brotherhood transcending diversities renouncing practices derogatory to dignity of women so anyone who is creating chaos is punished by unleashing honey bees on him just try to remember this then six is rich heritage of our composite culture preserving of it so just remember six is sticks so try to associate culture culture taj mahal so rather just imagine taj mahal is being supported on stick of match sticks so it is a very bizarre image you'll not forget this now seventh is related to wildlife and natural environment so just remember you are standing in heaven seven is heaven is a long line and those who ever who have tortured any wildlife or have spoiled environment they are asked not to enter in heaven so just try to remember this obviously please watch the memory techniques video it will help far far better then eight is gate so you have to develop scientific temper reform reasoning spirit of inquiry so inside your head is a gate try to open it with the help of a key and put all your blind faiths sorry blind faiths and beliefs in that and eat the key so try to remember this very weird kind of imagery but it will stick with you eight is gate so nine is line so anyone who is destroying public property just try to remember you st- i'm asking them to stand in a line just like our lkg class and slapping them on the palm with a wooden scale so it used to happen earlier not now ask them to stand in a line that is nine is line and then punish them and finally to strive towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so the nation constantly rises to higher levels of endeavor and achievement so 10 is hen try to remember you are sitting in a poultry farm and then you are having lots best quality of hens are produced by you so hen means best excellent quality so that your poultry farm raises both in individual and collective activity something like that even if a slight hint comes in the memory it's a crunch time in mains you can write two three lines and you'll get one mark more which will make your break your career then finally 11th headed back 86th constitutional amendment act 2002 i also added article 21a that is right to education then after seven years it was enforced by right to education act so it gives the opportunities has to be provided by parents or guardians to the children or ward as the case may be between 6 to 14 years of age so just imagine now you have come to 11th so you have to add by one so one was regarding son so we remembered their constitution book whole hand etc now you are coming back to the class after having singing national anthem so now you can imagine and associate these vivid imageries so i hope you can remember these 11 in sequence again i am telling you watch all the polity videos before and specifically for this how to remember a sequence watch the memory and techniques so I, i hope you enjoyed the video so the entire fundamental duty is boils down to this tricolor so we have ought to respect our national flag and everything we are we should be for this each and every fiber of our body should be devoted to it so i hope you like the video so this is the youtube channel and academy do let me know do give me the feedback how was it and this is the facebook page and you can also tweet to me at my twitter channel twitter handle at roman sani please 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 spread the word and help those who cannot afford coaching thank you for watching the video have an awesome day